Welcome to Violin Adventures number 95. This episode is full of a lot of different things, so I hope you enjoy it. We're going to start off with our five string viola. Okay, our E string, our long viola E string has arrived. I'm using a helicor from Diodario, and yes, that is a long E string. So we're going to put that on this viola and then tune it up, give it a little play before we send it off. Okay, I'll tune this up and see you in a couple seconds. between the strings from hitting the other string. Okay, so when you prepare an instrument to ship, it's good to turn, tune down the strings maybe a quarter of a turn. So there's still tension on the string, but it's not all the way up. Just enough to hold the bridge and sound post in place. And the exciting thing about shipping, something that's good to know, is the smaller your box, the cheaper the price. But you also have to make sure that you pad the instrument really well, which this was nicely padded when it came. So I'm going to make sure that it's not wiggling around. And it's good not to use plastic on your instrument just in case it should stick to the varnish. So we have cloth here that the owner had in the case, which is really good, 100% cotton cloth. And also I'm using some paper. Protective and yet light case, which is good. So we're gonna put it in the box. And that's just so there'll be some give if it gets dropped or anything. And a really good idea that this person did is put extra cardboard lining inside the box, especially around the perimeter, the heart of the violin. I'm going to put that back in here. That's wrapping around just a little extra protection. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's put some stickers on here. Came back and dug out my. Yes, to lend us. Next, we had a special package come in the mail. So I want to say a special thanks to the YouTube viewer named Hope. Thank you for this package. I have a special box here that just came in the mail from one of you, so let's open it up and see what's in there. Look at this. Beautiful. 
Beautiful, beautiful. This is a book on Picot. This is a book on the bow makers of the Picot family. And the book is just, it looks like it's, it's brand new. Aren't these pictures beautiful? This is really helpful in identifying bows, the frogs and the tips. Lots of bow makers, beautiful. Thank you very much. The other book by Walter Hama, Italian violin makers. Beautiful pictures and descriptions of Italian violin makers. This is such a valuable book. And um, my mentor, Albert Muller, had these. Yeah, and I know how valuable they are. And I'm just so grateful for these copies. Making a sealer coat. Okay, it's high time that we made some sealer coat. I have this nice gallon jar from Liberty, the little Amish in one of their shops. And now it's high time to make some more sealer coat. I got this big old cookie jar from an antique store in Sacramento and it's been holding my lack for a long time. Okay, that looks like a good amount. Next, we're gonna pour a good amount of denatured alcohol on here. And there we go. We're gonna let this sit for a little bit. Maybe for a few months. And let the lac dissolve. And then we'll revisit it and see how it looks. We need to take these two pieces of wood and glue them up. So I always want to make fresh glue for a glue up like that. A little progress on the new violin. Okay, here's our fresh high glue. I always want to make brand new glue when I'm going to glue up the back or the top of the violin. So this is brand new fresh. And uh, some of you have been noticing the things in the room or little details. So if you have questions about something you see, feel free to ask questions. So right now I have the top ready to put together. And a good question to think about regarding hide glue versus other glues. Do you know of any instrument maker that puts the wood together with anything but hide glue on the top and the back. I'm talking about violin makers. This, if it's done correctly, if it has a good contact on both sides, 
and the glue is good and fresh, these seams stay together for as long as we have violins, which is about four or five, four or five hundred years. And here you can see the glue is so clear and clean because it's freshly made. So it's not only strong, but it's also doesn't leave any marks or have any dirt in there. So it's very hard to see the seam once we get it all carved out. And back to our challenging cello. Okay, here's our cello our challenging cello. At this point, I'm gonna just start rubbing it down with my rotten stone. And if it needs another coat later on, we can always do another coat. But getting ready to set up the cello. It's got all polished and I realize I need to clean out these peg holes. They have uh, varnish in there and then we can put the pegs in. I found the old bridge, well the bridge that I cut for this one. So we have just a little bit and it'll be set up. But I have a special cellist who's going to play it for us next week. So Hope you come back next week so you can hear it. And a few of you have requested that we do a before and after on the cello. I wasn't able to get that together this week, but I'm hoping the coming week I can get the footage together and we'll have a short before and after. And stocking up on some more candles. The Hebrew Minute. Ma enosh ki tis kerenu, uben adam ki tif kadenu. What is man that you think or remember him? or the Son of Man, that you visit or attend to him. If you know where this is found, please put it in the comments below. And thank you to the listener who sent in this suggestion. 
And if any of you have verses you want to have read, just put them in the comments below. We have a list and we're going straight through the list. Well, here it is, the end of the week. It's a beautiful uh, sunny day, not too hot, not too humid, beautiful blue sky. And the grass just got mowed, so it smells really good. Okay, we're going to go in and see where we're at. Here's the shop. Let's find out what we have looking forward to do in the next week. Well, here's our challenging cello, and true to its name, <laughs> I did not get it set up yet. We got the pegs in, and those are turning nicely, and we're working on the end pin. And then we had a nice interruption. I'll show you what that is. Here, a real nice old ukulele came in the shop, and it wanted to be repaired, so I gave him a spot on the table. Here amidst the clutter is our new violin and we're just working on getting the corners shaped so we'll finish that up next week. Here we're leveling, leveling out the back for the new violin and here is our YouTube violin still hanging out. I want to give it maybe one more week to really have a good dry coat. And behind it here is our sealer coat. It has darkened up quite a bit in the last three days. I don't know if you can see, there's a nice color in there, a little bit of red showing through. So I think that's going to be a beautiful sealer coat when it gets ready. We had another visit, and this is just a beautiful violin. This will probably sell for about $450, but... It's just beautiful. It's been antiqued and we're going to just set it up and make sure it has a beautiful tone to match its looks. <laughs> well, here's our candle room. Over there we have uh, four, five candles waiting to be dipped in the glaze. And then here we have, it looks like uh, nine candles ready to be shipped out. And hopefully this is a sneak peek into next week. I want to get some miniatures going. We're going to make some violin shops and then a couple violin studios. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you for all your comments and your thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.